Hello friends and welcome to another video of the series Practical Hands-On in Physics and Electronics. In this video we will study about the capacitors. Capacitors are passive components containing at least two conductors like this separated by an insulating or dielectric layer like this. Its formula is like this epsilon r epsilon into epsilon naught into area divided by distance. Epsilon r is the relative permittivity, epsilon naught is the absolute permittivity, a is the area, and d is the distance between the two conducting plates. Capacitance is measured in farads. Now the symbols are like this first one is that of uh, fixed non-polarized capacitor second symbol is of polarized capacitor and the third symbol is of variable capacitor and the applications of capacitors are enormous like energy storage tuning filtering sensors data storage as bypass coupling or decoupling capacitors in oscillator circuits clamping circuits triggering circuits signal processing etc. Now next what are the different types of capacitors? There can be two types of capacitors fixed and variable. Fixed capacitors can be of non-polarized type and polarized type. Non-polarized capacitors can be of various types like ceramic based, film based, paper based, mica capacitors or glass based capacitors. Polarized capacitors can further be divided into two categories, it is electrolytic and supercapacitor. Electrolytic capacitors can be of aluminum based, tantalum based or niobium based. Finally, the variable capacitors can be of two types. First one is the trimmer capacitor and second is the tuning capacitor. So these are the various types of capacitors and we'll study them in details. So first is the ceramic capacitor. Here we have a disc of ceramic which acts as the dielectric we have electrodes on both of its sides and these are the connecting wires. It is encapsulated using a protective coating and there is a number on it which defines its capacitance values. So these are some features, low loss factor, reasonable level of stability low capacitance per unit volume, high frequency responses due to the parasitic effects like resistance and inductance. So next one is the mica capacitor. Mica capacitor comprises of different sheets of mica which acts as dielectric and then in, in between them we have silver plates. Actually we can have alternate plates of uh, mica and silver and uh, also we can have the case where we have uh, mica sheets coated with silver coating. So coating is always preferred instead of silver plates. So these are the external connections. So this is the actual picture of mica capacitor. So these are some features, low tolerance, stable and very accurate, low resistive inductive losses, characteristics are mostly frequency independent, they can withstand high voltage and temperature and they have low capacitance values. So next one is the paper capacitor. Paper capacitor is made either by taking 
two or more aluminum sheets and placing wax paper between them or by stacking paper sheets coated with metallic zinc or aluminum the waxed paper acts as the dielectric and metal sheets or coating acts as the electrodes this the schematic is like this we have metal foils or coating and then in between them we have waxed paper paper capacitors looks like this and these are some features low capacitance values high working voltage and current high leakage rates tolerance not better than 10 to 20 percent making them unsuitable for precise timing circuits next are the thin film capacitors now the construction of thin film capacitor is same as that of the paper capacitors discussed earlier the only difference is the dielectric used now the dielectric layer can be of polymers like polyester polystyrene polypropylene polycarbonate etc or it can be of metal oxides Now these are some features of thin film capacitors low cost low losses at high frequencies high stability low self inductance and esr long shelf life esr is the effective series resistance which degrades the capacitors next one is the glass capacitor we can also used actually glass as a dielectric medium so glass can also be used as a dielectric layer the capacitors thus formed are used in rf circuits where high performance is required glass capacitors offer low temperature coefficient with no hysteresis no piezoelectric noise zero aging and extremely low losses they have a large rf current capability with high operating temperature So the next one is the electrolytic capacitors. Now they can be of various types. So first one that we are going to study is aluminum based electrolytic capacitor. They look like this. Electrolytic capacitors are used when large capacitor values are required. Few microfarads to millifarads. Thin metal film or layer is used for one electrode and for second electrode a semi liquid electrolyte solution which is in jelly or paste is used the dielectric is a thin oxide layer so the schematic is like this it comprises of two aluminum foils then there is an oxide layer since aluminum foil is used so oxide layer is of aluminum oxide and then there is a tissue soaked with electrolyte we also have a paper separator to prevent short circuiting of the two aluminum foils when we roll them to form the final capacitor now there are some uh, features of electrolytic capacitor high capacitance and voltage ranges are available very good availability of raw material aluminum in the case possibility of explosion if wrong polarity is connected tendency to self heat for types with high effective series resistance limited frequency response high leakage current and aging so next are the other two tantalum based and niobium based electrolytic capacitor tantalum capacitor look like this here we have a sponge titanium material with a layer of tantalum oxide tao2 o5 and then a tantalum wire is embedded into this sponge tantalum actually with increase in uh, surface area the charge collection capability of these electrolytic capacitor increases so we are using a sponge tantalum 
this layer of TaO2 O5 acts as dielectric. Then we have a MnO2 as electrolyte. It can be a solid or liquid or in gel or paste form. Then we have carbon and silver for external connections. Now tantalum capacitors allow large current to pass through them. They are reliable and stable over time, superior frequency characteristics, but they may lead to thermal runaway and small explosions. High voltage and capacitance not normally available and polarity and voltage limit should be taken care of. And the next one is that of the niobium. The construction of niobium capacitor is same as that of the tantalum. Only difference is tantalum is replaced by niobium. It is because niobium has certain advantages over tantalum like high relative permittivity but at increased dielectric thickness, abundance of niobium ore in nature as compared to tantalum, light weight, higher ignition energy than tantalum resulting in reduction of ignition failure mode and finally self arresting mechanism where during local breakdown NBO will transform into NBO2 thus protecting from short circuit mode. Now rest of the capacitors will study in our next video. I hope you like this video. Kindly share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe our channel for future videos.